This is the most excited I've seen the AI community since AutoGPT first showed up on the scene, and it's because of ChatGPT's new plugin, Code Interpreter. All right, so the main thing I want to do in this video is show you six ways that I'm seeing people use Code Interpreter in just the first few days of it being available. That includes data analysis and visualization, academic research, support for development projects, visualizations that are really interesting and fun, basic video editing even, and an approach to data analysis that leads to business strategy. Before we get there, I just want to do a brief intro on what ChatGPT plugins are and what Code Interpreter is specifically. So ChatGPT plugins are effectively the way that third parties can use ChatGPT and build their functionality into it. So you see here a set of the plugins that they launched with, Instacart, order from your favorite local grocery stores, Open Table, provide restaurant recommendations with a direct link to book, right? So you can do these things from within the ChatGPT experience. But ChatGPT itself, or OpenAI, created a couple of plugins itself, and one of them was called Code Interpreter. Effectively, what Code Interpreter allows you to do is to upload some set of data and then have ChatGPT spit out analysis or visualization. And that visualization part is really big. Obviously, that's a really new capacity. So let's move now to the six use cases that I've seen, starting again with data visualization. This one has gotten a ton of attention. John Backus uploaded a CSV of San Francisco crime data and asked ChatGPT to visualize trends. So you can see number of incidents per month over time. You can see crime hotspots in San Francisco. You can see what it suggested they should do with analysis of the data set. So John says, give me 10 ideas of trends, visualizations, and analyses I could do. So you're not even required to know what analysis or visualization you want. What ChatGPT came up with was day of the week analysis, hourly crime trends, seasonal crime trends, police district analysis, crime resolution rates, top crime categories, crime category trends crime category trends, crime clustering, comparing crime types by location, correlation analysis, right? Like really interesting stuff. You see here that it did some of that visualization then, number of incidents by week of, by day of the week, hourly crime trends, et cetera, et cetera. So this is sort of a pure play version of this data analysis and visualization that I think is at the heart of Code Interpreter and why people are so excited. Now move over to Ethan Mollick, who is a professor at Wharton, and he says academia is in for a wild ride. What he did, just as an experiment, was upload census data and a data dictionary into GPT with Code Interpreter. He asked it then, I would like you to generate some interesting draft hypotheses about industries and, and metropolitan areas and then to test them with the data. Make assumptions if you need to, put it in a paper. So you can't really read it probably from where you are, but it says title, Regional Dynamics of Industry Characteristics, a comprehensive examination of payroll, employment, and establishments across metropolitan and micropolitan areas. So effectively, this is taking census data and actually not just analyzing it, but thinking about what is interesting about the data, what comparisons might be worthy of further elucidation or study, and then turning that into a paper which is supported with visualizations. You see here, linear regression, total number of employees versus total annual payroll across metropolitan areas, and another correlation between total number of employees and total annual payroll across MSAs. Now, Ethan says, it's obviously not a top journal paper or anything close, but this took me less than 10 minutes, and I did not do any work to find an interesting data set or guide the AI in any way. If nothing else, academic publishing is about to be overwhelmed. Next up, we have coding support. Pietro here says, ChatGPT code interpreter is incredible. Here it extracts colors from an image to create a palette. You can see here that Pietro uploads an image that has a set of colors in it, and Code Interpreter looks at that, goes through a number of steps, and eventually spit out a palette that he can now use in the development work that he's doing. A fourth category I'm calling visualizations, but really interesting. And this is to show that this isn't just academic. Ethan again here says, this was kind of delightful. I uploaded a CSV file of every lighthouse location in the US. ChatGPT Code Interpreter created a GIF of a map of the lighthouse locations where the map is very dark, but each lighthouse twinkles. A couple of seconds later, he got exactly that GIF. You can see the twinkling coming all around the lighthouse borders. 
Riley Goodside did something similar with an example that I think many of you will recognize. He writes, make a 512 by 512 GIF with fallen green matrix letters. Assume no fonts. 30 frames, 5 frames per second. No talk, just go. Code Interpreter says finished working and has exactly the thing that he asked for, the classic matrix falling letters. Get ready for a bunch of weird, quirky, and nostalgic stuff like this. Riley did another experiment, though, as well, where he did basic video editing in ChatGPT, converting an uploaded GIF to a longer MP4 with slow zoom. Riley says, I'll upload a GIF and you give me a five-second MP4 with a dramatic slow zoom in. No talk, just go. Riley loves that no talk, just go. Code Interpreter says, sure, upload the file and I'll do it. This is the GIF that Riley uploaded. And this is the dramatic zoom in that came out on the other end, turning a GIF into an MP4. Now, the final way that someone's using this that I wanted to discuss is actually kind of a synthesis of a number of different parts. This isn't just data analysis. It isn't just data visualization. It does that, but then it goes to another level by actually layering in suggested business strategy on top of it. So what David Boyle here has uploaded is a set of information. It's an untitled spreadsheet about music market revenues in various countries. What you're seeing on your screen right now is Code Interpreter figuring out what data is actually in this chart. The country, the population, the total recorded music market revenues, the total physical and digital revenues, the year-on-year -year change, etc., right? This is just Code Interpreter figuring out what's in the chart. Now David says he'd like to cluster the data. He's actually driving this process a little bit. He says, I want to find clusters that are attractive. So here you see it working. And then it starts to come up with these clusters. Cluster zero consists of countries with relatively low total recorded music market revenues. Cluster one is countries with moderate total recorded market revenues. Cluster two consists of the United States, which is the highest total recorded music market revenue. However, ChatGPT also says that the way that it bound things was arbitrary and he could further refine the clustering. David Boyle says, I want a higher resolution view, perhaps five clusters. And then he says, can you bring each to life to an executive trying to decide where to focus, give each cluster a catchy name, etc." Sure enough, Code Interpreter comes back, the rising stars, cluster zero, the untapped potential, cluster one, the budding performers, cluster two, the music superpower, cluster three, and the consistent contenders cluster four. And this is where David starts to translate it into strategy. He says, for each cluster, please write a strategy for a company looking to grow its business in that segment. Sure enough, a customized strategy for each of those sectors comes up. So what I loved about this example is that it really shows how this isn't just some cool academic analysis, but can be a direct line between data analysis and visualization into strategy, business strategy that sits on top of that. Anyway, I think over the next few weeks, we're probably going to see a ton of veritable explosion of uses of Code Interpreter, and I am so excited to see what people do with this and how it changes how we think about data analysis and visualization in general. If you're enjoying the AI Breakdown, please subscribe to the channel, and until next time, peace.